This morning we've been chatting uh, around the ability to love mercy, where so often when we think about loving mercy, we think about us being shown mercy. But when Jesus speaks about mercy, he says, blessed are those who show mercy because God will show his mercy to them. And when Paul picks up uh, the conversation on mercy, he says, it's our ability to reflect on God's mercy that empowers us to willingly sacrifice our own lives. And he says that's proper worship and it actually proves the will of God in your life. Two massive statements. So if you want to ask the question, what does God require of us? Think about this. God requires you to love mercy. He requires you to to surrender yourself, to find yourself in this great act of mercy where He has given you all things for life and godliness and to take that as the starting point to say, God, I will bring solutions to the social pain in my community. Now just think about this. Um, who needs a phone call? <laughs> who needs a conversation? Who needs to uh, be exposed to the reality of God's mercy in your world through this week? Where we don't reduce worship to just a vertical flatline experience. Remember what we said last week, in order to go deeper, you have to commit to going wider. And what if some of the depth that you've been desiring is actually only possible if you give yourself to the social pain, the areas of misery and failings and oppression in other people's lives that you need to engage? It could be a family member, it could be a workmate, it could be um, a group of people that you know that really needs comfort in this season. And as we are moving towards Christmas, what better way would it be if God's church actually arose to the challenge of saying we will enter the tragedies, the failings and the misery of our world in a practical way um, as a worshipful response to prove the will of God that God loves everyone. Think about that and trusting that you would find um, easy steps to enact that in your world. Bless you.